You're welcome to International House of Virtue, the I Church. We are innovative, international, industrious, interdenominational, informed, interdependent, and inspirational.
Lift up your voice and magnify the name of the living God. Somebody magnify the name of the living God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Bible says that bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Beginning of this year, many are the things that has gone on. But we are in the ninth month. And even for us as a church, this year is our year of manifestations. The Lord has manifested himself in diverse ways. Once again, you want to lift up your voice in thanksgiving. You want to thank God for his protection. You want to thank God for your life. You want to thank God for the high church. You want to thank God for how far he has brought us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody lift up your voice and magnify the name of the living God. Father, we worship your holy name, O oh God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We worship you, O oh Lord. For every benefit, O oh God, Daddy, we say we are grateful, O oh Lord. We worship you because you are God. Daddy, for the high church, Daddy, we say we thank you. For every word, O oh God, that you have given us throughout this year. Oh, Daddy, with one accord, we say thank you. Daddy, we say thank you. We say thank you. Thank you. We worship your holy name, O oh God. We magnify your holy name. We say glory, glory, glory be unto your name, O oh Lord. Hey, and obey with one accord. Yet thou art here and sad that Papa, yeah, you are here and sad that We worship your holy name. We worship your holy name. We worship your holy name. Make a yandara da bo shiri yandara da baha. Maka yandara da 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 ba lebe 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 lebe. Maka yandara da da ba da baha. Ali be yandara da bo shiri lebe lebe In the mighty name of Jesus. Bible says that the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut off. I don't know what your expectations is this morning. But one thing I'm set to tell you is that God is set to visit you wherever you are. God is set to visit you this morning. 
you want to lift up your voice and pray put your expectations before the Lord he has done it before he is still doing it and he will do it for you I don't know whatever your expectation is but this morning what I have to say is that God is set to visit you you want to lift up your voice and say that Father I come before you forget about everything that you find yourself in just forget about it and know that God is ready he has a word for you God you have prepare your heart to have an encounter this morning in the mighty name of Jesus lift up your voice and present yourself before him lay your hands before him saying the father visit me this morning I don't want to leave this service the same I don't want wherever I am I don't want to be the same I want to have an encounter with you I want a divine encounter this morning encounter that will cause many to know that you have manifested yourself in my life Sweet Holy Spirit, we invite you this morning, oh God. Father, we pray that we take full control, oh God. We know you are with us, oh God. Father, that visitation that we need this morning, hey, may you not pass us by, oh Lord. That visitation we need this morning, may you not pass us by, oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, wherever we are, all over the world, oh God, any word that we have to receive, any encounter that we have to receive. Daddy, we prepare our hearts and we come before you. Daddy, we are saying that visit us, O Lord. Touch us, O Lord. Speak to us, O Lord. May we have divine encounters, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, as the word comes unto us, as ministrations come unto us this morning, oh, Daddy, may it be another level. May lives be transformed. May burdens be lifted. In the mighty name of Jesus, we depend on you, sweet Holy Spirit. Hey, Daddy, we depend on you, sweet Holy Spirit. This morning, O God, may we have diverse encounters. May we have diverse encounters. Make a yanda da da ba da ba, a lebe de de bo shere yanda da da ba ha, libe yanda da 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 ba ha, ka yanda da 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 bo shere de be de be, ma ka yanda da 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 ba da ba ha, a libe yanda da da bo shere de be de be, a la ba ka yanda da da ba, lebe yanda da da bo shere de be de be, ma ka yanda da da ba da ba, ma ka yanda da da ba. In the mighty name of Jesus, you wanna lift up your voice and pray. That the speaker that is even coming this morning. May God put your own word in his mouth. May God put his own word in his mouth. A word that will bring you joy. A word that will bring you transformation. A word that will let you know that God is still God. That he's still in the miracle business. You want to lift up your voice and pray that Father, even as you have prepared your servant this morning, may I have my own personal word. May I have my own personal word in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, may we have our individual word, O oh God, this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, a word that will liberate us, O oh Lord. A word that will transform us, O oh Lord. A word that will bring us joy, O oh Lord. A word that will give us peace, O oh Lord. Hey, Father, our songs are left out this morning. Hey, may we be liberated into realms of glory. May we enter another level, O oh God, with you, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. May we have deeper fellowship with you, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Daddy, we so will thank you. Somebody thank the Lord that this morning he's visiting you. This morning he's giving you your own personal word. That this morning, before the end of the service, there's going to be a transformation in your life. Father, we thank you. Daddy, we give you all the glory. We magnify your holy name, O oh God. We thank you for what you have done, O oh God, and what you are set to do this morning. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, that you are manifesting yourself this morning in another level, oh God, to your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, oh bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Somebody shout amen. amen. to make a joyful noise unto the Lord this morning, wherever you are. Oh, make that joyful noise unto him. Once you make that noise, he's healing all your infirmities. Oh, come on, make a joyful noise. Are you ready to praise God this morning? Yeah. Let's do it. Wow. 
church and I just want to say God bless you so much for being with us this morning. We are still in the celebration moment of Neokai Ministries at 10 and God being so good. Uh, I pastor is you know in a season of celebration and his birthday was yesterday, which we give God glory and honor for. So at this juncture, I just want to welcome everybody here. We have our wonderful brethren who are at the NOM campus. We say welcome. And also the KQ campus. Everybody there, you are welcome. And our wonderful members on Zoom. God bless you for always making it a point to be with us as we fellowship in love. And our global audience, we are not left out, yes? I mean, God is so good and it's wonderful that we see each other every time and we gather and, you know, we uplift the name of God. We give God glory. At this moment, let me just take some few minutes to let you know some notices of the iChurch. So God willing, every Tuesday, we have the discipleship and Bible cell meetings, and it starts at 6.30 p.m. And normally we have it on Zoom, so you just watch out for, you know, the links that we, we use to communicate via Zoom. And there's also the I'll Bet You, and the I'll Bet You is every Friday. This is a prayer session, and you would not want to miss it. You come together, and let's lift up our voices to God in prayer. And that is also 6.30 p.m. every Friday on Zoom as well. Then today, and I mean today, you cannot miss this opportunity to just lift up your voice to God. We have a part of worship time today at 7.30 p.m. and it's prompt, no lateness. This is also going to be online and we'll share the links as you know, time goes on. And there is every Sunday the I Kid service. And I am being blessed. My kids are being blessed. And I hope you do not, you know, take your kids out of having a time of fellowship with one another. Let your kids also be blessed. Connect and let them know that, yes, there's joy in the house of the Lord. So, yeah, every Sunday, 7.45 a.m., that is where we have the kids' service. And we also have the main iChat service, which is for the adults. That also starts at 8.45 a.m. every Sunday. Yes, and you can join us via Zoom for the main service, then there's a rebroadcast on Facebook, which you could also be blessed with. So I also want to remind everyone that our members, Mr. Moore is celebrating his birthday on the 24th of this month. Let's do well to remember and, you know, give them all the wishes, all the prayers that they 
need. And we also have Nanawa Mensa who celebrates her birthday on the 30th of September. Let's do well to remember them in prayer. And when the day gets there, let them feel special with all your wishes and possibly some presents will also do. Yeah, then we are really blessed with some special people in our midst. Yes, everyone is special, but you know, there are some who also need that reverence because God's anointed, oh my word. So we have today with us Pastor Joe Bicham. I know it's a household name. Pastor Joe Bicham is blessing us today. And the I Church, we are so privileged to have Pastor Joe Bicham with us. And our homie, Mr. and Mrs. Amihe, they are also with us today. So it's just it's just wonderful. And I believe that everyone will not leave here the same. And in the course of the program, we'll have a teaching service, a teaching time from Pastor Joe Bicham. Then the time of adoration, Pastor Joe Bicham and the I Church are going to lead us in a time of adoration after the teaching service. Then there will also be a ministration and a giving time. As I said earlier, we had a uh, Papa, Reverend Neil Kai, who celebrated his birthday yesterday. So a time to appreciate our I Pastor. Don't be left out. Give and it will come back to you in good measure. Let us bless our Papa in our offerings. Everything that you can do. I mean, he's been a blessing. His life has been a blessing to us. Then, then our pastor will crown it all with a thanksgiving and benediction. Just stay glued to your seat. Do not move and just stay connected. If you do not have enough data, please just top up. Top up and stay connected, okay? So at this moment, let me just leave you to enjoy and open up your heart and receive of what the Lord has for you today. We we'll welcome Pastor Nee to take over for now and introduce Pastor Joe Bitchin. God bless you. Bless you. Wow. Wow, I feel like going to Austria. <laughs> what a blessing. Today, I'm very excited. Um, I'm very, very excited. Uh, in the life of every individual, you, you want people to know that you came from somewhere. Hallelujah. Today, um, we, we have a big surprise from the oil city. Um, <laughs> and, and not the one you know, but... I was in the office, suddenly, emissaries had come ahead of, of our main speaker for today. <laughs> uh, church, I want you to know that Pastor Ed and the wife are in the house. Wow. He came with the whole family. It's, it's such a blessing, such an honor. Oh, we are so blessed. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. Can you can you spare me the other microphone? Let's let's have a word from Pastor Ed. You know, let's you know he can't come all the way from the oil city like that. You know, exactly. He has to do the John the Baptist thing before the before the the, 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 the Bishop of Tadi, you know, takes over. <laughs> let's, let's, it's, it's, it's an honor to have you. Let's, let's work on him again. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Are there believers in the house? Yes. yes. Make some noise for the devil in hell to know that you are still alive. Yeah! <laughs> well, um, let me announce to you that the next chapter of your life is going to be better than the ones you have experienced. Amen! Amen. Um, as I was driving on my way to this place this morning, this, it kept ringing in my spirit. Mm. The next chapter is going to be better than the previous. Mm. The next chapter is going mm. to be better. The next chapter is going to be better. Mm. The next chapter is going to be better. Mm. The next chapter is going to be better. Oh, yes. The next chapter is going to be better. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I don't know how many times I have to say this, but the next mm. chapter is going to be better. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus.
you, the Lord. next chapter is going to be better. Thank you, Lord. Amen. See, whatever, whatever the devil took you through, for Joseph and his brothers, in Genesis 50, when they came back, <laughs> Joseph told them that you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And the devil took you through some things, and in the calculation of a devil, he felt that if I do this, that's the end of the story. But where the devil puts a full stop is where God puts a comma. <laughs> when, when the devil felt that, okay, Jesus has come, and he's all over the place, and he's healing people, delivering people. Everything that Jesus did was just within Israel. He didn't go out uh, except for when he was just a little baby. He went to Egypt. His parents took him to Egypt. But when he came back, he started his ministry. Everything he did was just there in Israel. He didn't go too far. So the devil thought that, oh, if I kill him now, then this is the end of the story. But what happened is that when the devil was killing Jesus, he was thinking about Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> and he was thinking about Nigeria and Afghanistan. Mm. All the places that he couldn't go, he knew that his presence would be there. Mm. So the Bible says that had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Yeah. All right, so um, this morning, I, I'm so blessed to be here. We bring you greetings from Chadi. Yeah. <laughs> um, we... We came to celebrate birthday. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Atani has been a blessing to all of us and over the years. And by God's grace, um, there are many things that we have experienced together in ministry. Mm. Um, many, many things. I mean, if I start, we will not close the service. <laughs> but I'm not preaching today. I just came to bring you greetings and then prepare the way for also for Joe to lead us into his presence. But we came to offer our support, our prayer, and our full backing for this ministry. Full backing, Charlie. You know, one of the things, you know, Atani used to say that, like, people are following him when he himself, that he, he doesn't know where he's going. <laughs> but I can tell you, this one, let me remove my mask and just, <laughs> One of the reasons why I followed him was because I knew where he was going. Uh... Let me show you how I know where he was going. He followed God's step and God's leading every step of the way. Mm. And that was a blessing for me. I said, okay, even if you don't know where you are going and you are following God, then you know where you are going. That's it. You are going where God is going. Mm. So let me follow you <laughs> and let's do the work together. Mm. And, and one of my most blessed times over here were all the outreaches, the, the times we had. One time I woke up at dawn and I picked the book, um, Losing my Isaac. Oh, okay. okay. I read I read that book one sitting at dawn. Hmm. One sitting at dawn. When I when I got up at two a.m., I said, Charlie, this is morning devotion. I read that book. Many many people just know Atani for his songs, but for those of us who have encountered him, we know many other sides of him. Hmm. We know the heart that God has given him, even to put down those things in the book. And to be a blessing to us, my most cherished moment with Atta has been the times that we just sit and talk. It's, <laughs> it's not the times that we are, I'm playing keyboard and he's singing. It's the times that, let's sit down and talk. Those are one of my most cherished moments with Atta. So Atta, we came to support you. Thank we came you. To, to, to tell you that you have our full backing oh. and we are with you in prayer. And we believe that where God is taking us from here, is better than where we have been. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want to... I mean, you have something to play? Confirm for me. You have something to play? Yes. So before you play, let's do our declaration song and then I'll hand over the service to my big brother Reverend Joe Beecham let's do our declaration song today if I leave it for after the service we will not do it <laughs> 
so the words will be on the screen I shall seek the Lord I shall seek the Lord with all my heart, with all my heart and with all my mind and with all my, mind, and with all my soul with all my soul I shall walk in step, I shall walk in step with the Holy Spirit If that's all you do, say Amen. 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 Then say, I shall refocus. I shall refocus on that matter. On the that I shall do my quiet time. I shall do my quiet time. And study the word. I shall pray. I shall pray. And fellowship. And fellowship with the brethren. With the brethren. Say Amen. 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 Verse 3. You say, I shall be a witness. I shall be a witness. And draw others onto the way. And draw others onto the way. I shall live and move. I shall live and move. And have been in the Lord. Have I been in the Lord? I shall cherish the cross. I shall cherish the cross. And, and it's, my it's message of love. love. If that's what you do. Say Amen. 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 Final verse. I shall carry extra oil. I shall carry extra oil. And bear fruit of righteousness. And bear fruit of righteousness. I shall do greater works. I shall, shall do greater works. Love my neighbor as myself. I belong, to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I'm an heir of the kingdom. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the morning. I'm blessed in the afternoon. I'm blessed in the evening. I'm blessed at the midnight. I'm blessed when I go out and when I come in. Ah, my basket shall be blessed. My kneading bowl is blessed. Blessed shall you be in the city and the field. Say amen. Amen. Honor to the Lord as we are on our feet. We want to welcome the ministry of Pastor Joe Beecham. Pastor Joe Beecham is a graced gospel singer, songwriter, music director, and a pastor. He has six albums. His albums have been a blessing over the years and have been accompanied by several testimonies. He has ministered to various congregations across Ghana and in countries like Germany and Holland. Joe Beecham Ministries aims to carry the message of hope and righteousness to humanity and to affect this generation positively through anointed music and worship. 
The ministry empowers young people through teachings, praise and worship workshops, impartation conferences, and anointed ministrations. He is married to Mrs. Rita Beecham, and they have been blessed with a beautiful daughter. With honor to God, let us rise to welcome Pastor Joe Beecham. Hallelujah. Amen. Please take your seats. Well, we thank God for this precious moment. And uh, I am happy to be here in your midst. Um, I want to salute the man of the house, the first lady and the family. The leadership of the entire Yokai Ministries. And I want to say that we believe in what you are doing. We love you with all our hearts. We will come anytime you call us. We will share in your your rising and your pain. We commit ourselves to being partners of this ministry. And we love you. I should have been here with the family. Uh, because of a few happenings, I had to come alone. My family, myself, we say happy birthday to you. Strong man. The entire Jobisha Ministries say a big, big happy birthday to you, sir. May the Lord himself direct you and lead you. We love you. Amen. 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 Shall we pray? Everlasting Father, we thank you for this morning. What a day to be in your presence when you have added a year full of grace and blessings to the years of your man servant Jehovah let this service not be about him but about you we pray that whatever you have put in our mouth to say let our tongue receive utterance to declare it we pray that by the time we live here, our story will be, behold, what manner of man is this, that he speaks, and everything becomes peaceful. Then the women will be singing, behold, what manner of love the Lord has given us, that we should be called the sons of God. And together we will be standing in reverence in awe of you. We love you. Take absolute control this morning. Visit us with your salvation and enter every trembling heart. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Uh, it's good to see Pastor Dawson here. I, I owe him a call. And uh, let me summarize it like that. And the call is coming. Hallelujah. And good to see all of you. Yeah. Uh, this morning I am encouraged. And okay, I will say that on air. Uh, another time I will tell you about, about it. But I am encouraged. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> um, the temptation with inviting a a minstrel to preach. You know what I'm... I'm yeah. See, I dare not raise a song now. Yeah, if I raise a song now. I'm sure some churches have not called me again because they, they called me to preach or to teach. And then I raised a song. And the, and the pastors are not happy with me. I don't know. I, I just, I'm just assuming. And that's why some churches have not called me again. And you know, it's not everybody who believes in 
the flow of the Holy Spirit so much. So some places, if they say sing, you, you have to sing. The command is sing. And some places, they say flow. Maybe I should start the flow church. <laughs> and in some places, they will say, Pastor, I have a pastor friend in the U.S. He says, I won't worry myself to bring a singer, a preacher, a teacher, and a prophet. I bring you alone. I bring you alone. I have all of them. And so I also ask him, are you going to give me the reward of a singer, a teacher? And, and he starts laughing. Kofuesi say, bro. Oh, and especially when you are preaching or teaching and somebody has decided to play the keyboard. <laughs> I mean, it, it destroys the whole message and releases something else. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I think I need glasses. Today, God has confirmed to me I need glasses. I have to open my eyes like this and read. Um, okay. I hope the bloggers are not writing this one. I said I need glasses. Because this day, anything you say. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, awesome. Uh, Be a good boy. Uh, be a good boy. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to, but be a good boy. I'm talking to myself, so you can. Since you tap into people's prophecies, when they say you build a house, they say I, re- I tap into it, I claim it. I'm, talk- I'm telling myself, be a good boy. So you also tap into it. I said, be a good boy, Joe. Be a good boy. I'm trying to be. Um, what my boss has asked me to be this morning so that we will achieve our full purpose for the service. Worship. Um, worship has been with us since the beginning of creation. And God loves to be worshipped. No wonder God is a man. Like, if I say God is a man, what I mean is that God, I know that God is not a female but a male. Do you agree with me? Uh, <laughs> the reason why I'm saying this is because I look at men and we love to be worshipped. We really love to be worshipped. The table is set. Clothes ironed. Car washed. The man comes out. A, any, a very efficient man in this life wants things to, things to be done orderly on his behalf or for him, right? And we are excited to know we have wives who think about our well being and who make things fall in place all the time. Are you with me? And we love it when we see a woman submit to us. And we are so excited when they are obedient to us. I'm telling you, the men, you are nodding, and the women are stiff. And I am also tempted to believe that God is a female at the same time. And the men don't like it. Even though they are nodding, their look on their faces is, is not 100%. Because women love to be praised. Yeah. They want 
reaffirmation, confirmations all the time. I went to the salon, came back. You haven't said anything. So you haven't said anything. So you haven't seen or you don't like it. Meanwhile, about three months ago or six months ago, you went and came and I said, this is beautiful. And I meant it for the whole year. I meant it for the whole, in fact, for the rest of our lives together. I meant it. But the woman wants to hear it now, the next minute, the next hour. So when was the last time you told me you love me? Are you seeing another woman? I'm suspecting you all. So the way you relate to the church, the ladies in the church, when we go for services, why don't you relate to me in that same manner? Are you with me? Because they want to be reassured that they are still number one. Hallelujah. There are other things I can't say now, but later I will say them. So you see that the God factor is in all of us. And if a man is jealous, he is more dangerous than a jealous woman. Because often, normally, we know women are very jealous. Right? But if a man be, tends to be jealous, it's dangerous. It's like witchcraft. Witchcraft. A woman who is a witch is called a witch. <laughs> a man, a man who, who is a witch is called a witch. <laughs> Even the Zad, the Z A R D, added to that way, way is, is something else. Are you with me? Good. So God is jealous also. And in his word, in the Ten Commandments, he says, you shall not worship any other God apart from me, besides me. Because he hates to see us worshiping other gods, especially where the other gods are idols, images made by men. It is some of us worship the creation instead of the creator. We go to some places, you see that the pastor has more place in the hearts of the people than God. And that is an error. Hallelujah. So this morning, I want us to look at the full purpose of, the full purpose of our congregational worship as a church, as a group, as a congregation, when we gather like this and we say our worship, it is not only the 15, 20, 30 minutes given us to sing songs, but the entirety of the service is our worship. Hallelujah. Amen. So therefore, this suggests to us that maybe some of us I've not been offering total worship to God for many years or for, the, for most of our, our lives. We have not been offering total worship to God. Hello? You know we have members who greet our wives because they are our, our wives, but they don't really like them. Are you with me? Yeah. There are people who who will call you aside and say, why did you call her mommy? What is mommy about her? 
Huh? Am I being a good boy? Okay. And some of the people have to smile towards, towards our wives. I'm not saying me alone, but all of us. Definitely you have somebody in your life you, don't, you have not even met before who will not like you. And that is not genuine respect or reverence. And this morning, I would want us to change totally our perspective towards the worship of God. That it is not only the singing time, but every bit of the steps we take in this life. Amen. Am I speaking right? Yes. Okay. So, um, the full purpose of our congregational worship. Okay. There are three spheres in which our worship minister, our worship services minister. Three spheres. Say three. Okay. Number one is the vertical. Can I see your drumstick? Just, uh, this is vertical, right? Okay, good. You see that because it is vertical, it is pointing upwards and then also downwards. Hello. Worship is a two-way street. Worship is a two-way street. It's not a one-way street. When you look at a two-way street, cars flow towards one direction and then cars flow towards another, the opposite direction. So some are going this way, some are coming this way. Worship is like that. Whatever we say to God, okay, I have a pen here. It's okay. Whatever we say to God upwards in worship, uh, comes back to us in a better measure downwards in worship. Hello. So you see Abraham climbing the mountain to offer Isaac to God. Hello. And then he says to the servant that you remain here because I'm going beyond to do something that you can't handle. Okay? Now, he's, he tells the servant, I will bring the boy back. I will return with the lad. Are you with me? He says, I will return with the lad. Say, I will return with the lad. Say it one more time. So, the lad in, in this sense was the object of sacrifice. Right? Good. How, how will you go and slaughter somebody and then come back with a person? So he should have said, I will return with the lad dead. Are you with me? Why? Because he understood the law of confession and the law of provision. That what you confess is what you get. Hello? So whilst he was going to offer the boy to God, he knew that because he had a certain kind of covenant with God, uh, he had a say in the matter. And I want to tell you this morning that you have a say in the matter. And your sacrifice may be crying, looking at you, asking questions. Why are you going to offer me? Why can't you enjoy me? Because, you know, this money can buy. Somebody comes and drops a key for the man of God. And uh, he, he, you, when you, you are returning home, you're asking yourself, why, why did I do that? And if you, if when, maybe when you were driving the car to his house, you were asking, ah, why should I give my car like that? Are you with me? But there is a principle when you know, even though your inner self uh, is complaining, you know that somebody higher has more than that to offer you. Hello? 
Let me stick to my notes. I'm becoming a bad boy. So, he says, I'll go and bring him back. So, in other words, can you hear? He says, we are going up to the mountain and we are going to come down. Because whatever I give to him, whatever I bind here is already bound up there. And whatever I lose here is already loosed. Are you with me? So, Abraham knew that I will go and offer, but I will come back with a better Isaac. Do you know he came back with a better Isaac? An Isaac, a child who has been put on an altar, is different from the Isaac who was running around in the village. If you have been offered to God before, if you have, your life has been put on the altar, you are never the same again. So let's learn to bring our children to the altar and lay them on the altar. They are bad in, in what they are doing, wayward, they are showing traits, they are good, they are brilliant. It doesn't matter who they are. Every morning when you go down on your knees, Put your children on the altar of God and they shall return to you better versions of themselves. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Am I speaking right? This is so important. Now, vertical, vertical means man to God. Man to God. Say man to God. Yes. So, you come before God, the foremost reason that, that we, the foremost reason that we come before God is for us to minister unto him. That's why we are here this morning. That's why you are with us wherever you are, spending time to be part of this worship. Hallelujah. It's for us to minister unto him. And it's a privilege to be called the minister of God. One who ministers to God. You don't understand that when you said, I serve with Neokai, you were actually saying, I am privileged to be part of the service that God has ushered him into. That's what you are saying. Are you with me? So David said in Psalm 23, he said, me, I am a shepherd, a shepherd boy. I take care of the sheep. But when I am not in your midst, Okay, let's. It doesn't matter. I am a shepherd boy. I take care of the sheep. But when God looks down on me, He doesn't see a shepherd, He sees a sheep. So He has placed me in an ad advantageous position to be a shepherd to you, and He gives me tutorials from heaven. So that I can also teach you. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So if you see a pastor who boasts. And talks about what he does and me and this or whatever. That is the spirit of Goliath. Not the spirit of God. If you see a politician, don't let me go there. The spirit of Goliath. You have to be able to identify it when you see one. Hello? So you are not leading the flock because of your degree or your, your, your doctorate or whatever. But because God sought for a man to stand in the gap. And he found you. 
because you were a man of unclean lips like Isaiah said in chapter 6. Because you have always lived amongst the people of unclean lips. <laughs> Do you get that? When, when Isaiah said, when, when King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. On and on and on. Then, then he said, woe is me. For well, I'm undone. For my eyes have seen the king. Mm. Isaiah saw heaven and nobody told him he was a sinner. What have you seen yet? Peter saw a catch and nobody told him he was a sinner. He looked at the magnitude of the miracle and he said, please go away. Go. Go away from me. You can't be with me for I am a sinner. What have you seen yet? What have you seen yet? Sometimes you may be thinking... You, you are driving some powerful car until you are on the motorway. And you think your car is the fastest on the road until somebody from nowhere comes and, and he does you less. And the more you step on your car, the more you are reversing. <laughs> then you should conclude in your heart that I haven't seen anything yet. Tell three people you haven't seen anything yet. Tell another person you have not seen. Tell yourself I have not seen anything yet. We are looking for the day when we sing in this place. When we sing in this place, you will see physical gold. How do you call it? Uh, gold something. I've forgotten the word is not coming. It's gold dust falling in the room. Hallelujah. It has happened somewhere. That's why I'm using it as a reference. The day when we are singing here, then crooked legs will be straight. You hear ka 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 ka. The day a corpse will will wake up at the mortuary and say, "Whose voice is that?" For the dead shall hear your voice and live again. Hallelujah. Are you with me? So, we come to minister to the Lord. And then, we don't come before God in worship asking. In worship, we give. So, worshipers are givers. That's one of the characteristics of a worshiper. Worshipers are givers. Hallelujah. But you press give us. You remember the woman with the alabaster bo bottle or box of oil, ointment? We can go on and on and on. So we come, our attitude should be, Lord, I bless you. Uh, which key are we in? Let me hear you a little. Okay. Can you stay in low for me? Okay, so the worshippers' attitude is attitude is me pede me show and you yum me pede me show and you yum me rap and tina maba. Okay, uh huh. Not me pede Okay, let me use the other one. Can bring me show me and son of Marco, right? The worshippers' attitude is. Me, me, me can't walk as he and there. Me can't walk as he and there. Mira, in Tina Maba. That's the reason I came. 
I, I, I want to bless you with something. That's why I came. The worshiper's attitude should not be Kabibi Trema and Sana Mako. That is prayer, not worship. Are, are you with me, church? Good. So that's, that's the worshiper's attitude. God, I bless you, not God, bless me. So the psalmist says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Are we being blessed this morning? Yes. And let me say to you, that how you feel about the service doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. Today the worship was nice. It was... And then God is sitting up there. What is he saying about the worship? God says, oh, today my son, he didn't do well at all. So it is what God says about the service that is important. It is what God says about what you are offering that is important. It is what God thinks about you that is important. Are you with me? It is not what you are thinking in that circumstance or situation you find yourself in. It is what God is saying. And what is God saying? He says that when everyone is saying that there is a casting down, you will say what? There is. That's, that's the mind of God towards you. So when you are in a certain situation, you seek for counsel, advice. And then you come to God and say, God, this is what they have said, but what are you saying? So a young man with future, intelligent, brilliant, skillful, resourced, well-respected, with a high position in a bank, says, I'm stepping out. And there is a meeting. In my classroom, there were, there were meetings about me. I didn't know because I decided to follow what God had said. And they will call you and give you counsel and advise you and tell you ABC. Then you go to God and you ask God, What are you also saying about this? And the Lord will speak. Amen. And today, because of that decision, this is where we are. Uh, are you with me, church? Yes. Because of that one decision, one great decision. And sometimes when people are talking and saying what they think about you, they don't talk about your sacrifices. They will not talk about your sacrifices. In fact, that some of the people who think they really know you, they have never known you because they, they, they met you maybe when you were 12 or 15 or 18 years old. But from your mother's womb, he has chosen you. Love has called your name. I've been born again to a family your blood flows through my veins and I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God and I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child. So you see, it is not how you feel, singers. There will be times you'll be leading worship and it's as if there is a concrete wall on top of you. And you, you, you are so stressed up. You, it's like nothing is happening. There are times when you are asked to lead songs and worship just politely turn it over to another person so that God will receive the fullest of his praise in our midst. 
There are times when you know you can't do it. Don't force it. Are you with me? And there are times when you raise a song and, the, and the, instead of the song going up, the song bends down. You pick it up, it doesn't go. There are times when you, you are asking, ah, today's worship, worship on call. And you, you, you'll be surprised. That is the one that is even before God already. But because you want your, your body, your skin to feel something, and that feeling is not coming, you say, uncle. Then, weeks or days later, somebody will meet you and say, hey, that day. <laughs> you are like, really? <laughs> it is not how you feel. It is what God says. Say, it is not about how I feel, but what God says. Am I speaking right? I think I should be bringing the teachings. I haven't started in Paul. Hmm. We can go to the other half, else I'm in trouble. Hallelujah. Yes. Is God pleased? Thou art worthy, O God, to receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So the questions you sh should keep asking yourself, is God pleased with me as a wife in this marriage? Is God pleased? Is God pleased with me as a husband in this house? Some Christians are marrying outside the word of God. But they go to church, all right. But when it comes to the way they do things, the word of God aside. It's an error. Are you with me? It's an error. Hallelujah. So the vertical, man to what? Man to God. Then God to man. I, I'm not sure I can cover all of them, but I will just, you know. God to man. Say God to man. Aha. Uh -huh. God communes with men. You know that. You know in the Garden of Eden, he used to come into the garden in the cool of the day to have communion with man. And God loves having communion with us. God loves to have conversations with us, spend time with us. Because one of the reasons is that everything in heaven is automated. It's a cycle. And the, ten and the, and the four and twenty elders, and the, they bow down, and they cast out their crown, and the uh, cherubim and seraphim this, and the angels say, and this and will happen, and that will happen. It's predictable. Everything that's happening in heaven is, is calculated. It's so beautiful. It's, it's choreographed nicely. It's like being in a certain church. I can't mention names. If you are a singer and your congregation can predict your next three songs, you are in a rut. R-U-T. You know when it rains and your car gets stuck in the mud? The more you step on it, the more the tie spins and creates the rut. And you, you want to move, but the tie is enjoying the thing. And you want the car to move, and it's not moving. If, I'm not saying don't have a list, don't have a song list. I'm begging you. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying don't let your singers uh, know the next song, no. But I'm saying let's give the spirit a chance more in our, our planned service. Is that okay to ask? Is that okay? It's very, very important. I love, I love order. But I love the Holy Spirit also. Hallelujah. It could so happen that as we are having service at this time, as I'm talking, 
God, the, the especial anointing has been released for somebody's right eye to start seeing well. Are you with me? Then I say, because I'm teaching, let me defer it to the ministration time. And by that time, the visitation is gone. It's not there. And when you begin, you know, there are times when we are ministering to people and the anointing stops. And we keep ministering. It's called waste of time and energy. Because the moment the door, the window opened and you didn't utilize it. I pray that we become sensitive to the spirit of God in this walk with him. Hallelujah. I believe in both. Can you lift up your right hand and say, I receive my healing this morning. Say, I receive my healing this morning. Hallelujah. We must guard against being, being sidetracked from the primary purpose of the worship. Many things can take our attention off the, the ministry unto the Lord or off our ministrations unto the Lord. One of them is self-centeredness. You are so cautious about yourself. So conscious about yourself. Uh, your shoe. Maybe your new shoe. Or your, your title. You are so... You, you ask... You, you see, first, when you come, we used to sing a song. I went to a Catholic school. We used to sing a song. Um, Father, I adore you. Lay my life before you. How I love. We have to be able to lay our lives before the Lord and ask Him to take over. Come breathe in me. All my life, take over. Come live in me. And I will rise on eagle's wings. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you with me this morning? Yes. Okay. So, um, um, self-centeredness. Who you are or who you feel you are or who you think you are can stop you from giving your full attention to the Lord in worship. Sometimes, ladies... Our hairstyle be, you know, you are so conscious of the hair falling on your forehead. So every two minutes, every two minutes, sometimes you want to check your eyelashes. Which one is the eyelash? Which one? Uh, I almost touched here. I, 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 had, I had to ask. <laughs> you know, all manner of things can distract us. Sometimes a keyboard player is worried about the keyboard he's using. Sometimes you are worried about the sound. You want a certain level of volume. They are saying that control it here. As for there, we won't open. <laughs> and you know, you want to negotiate with the, with the engineer. And some of our engineers are so strict... And they are not kind at all, some. I didn't say all of them. And they will not give you volume. They won't. They will never give you volume because he, he, he understands the apparatus. What he's cooking, your ingredient in the thing, he understands where he wants the level to be. But you two say, I want, I want to hear him, please. Here, I know, it, uh, I know it is not like this, but you go to certain places, the, the technical team, the sound man, the, camera, the media guys, they say, we are not part of the worship team. Why, how, why are we part of the worship team? And, and, and it's, it's, it's laughable. We are all working together towards the same goal. So we are all team members. Are you with me? Next time we'll talk about that one. And we'll deal with it and deal with ourselves. Hallelujah. So, self-centeredness. 
And then there are people who have critical spirits in the congregation. Na worship a warrior so na we mum mum we ni nim day. Just worship. They have front their faces and look at what they look at their their uh, mannerisms on stage. Look at their antics. What, what, what is that? Maybe your church. I went to a wedding in a certain church. The priest announced, "Here we don't clap until everything is done. We clap at the end." And unfortunately, there were charismatic SU boys in the wedding because the boy himself is ojacious. And the priest realized that day that it's either he tolerated them or he sacked them. Because the service is going on uh, and then you hear, eh, from the middle. You don't know who said it. And then he will come and give the warning again. And now... He, he knew it would not work, so he brought a younger priest to tell the young people that you can give a moderate club offering to the Lord. A moderate club offering to the Lord, not in excess. <laughs> and David says, Shout to the Lord, all ye earth, all ye people, all the earth. And let the voice of his praises be heard. Be, be what? Oh. And that day, I was so afraid. Because the, there was a pastor, a crazy pastor in the congregation. <laughs> he was just stand up and say, Amen, oh, amen. And then, <laughs> is he so critical spirit? You don't do this. You don't do that. Where the Spirit of God, there is liberty. Are you with me? If you enter an atmosphere and you see that there are so much, so many restrictions, the freedom is, is not 100%. Then there is something wrong. Because even the worship leader, as you stand to lead the people, like I said, you think the song is not going. You can't force anybody into worship. No. God commands our praise, but he seeks for worshipers. He doesn't command our worship. Never. God never commands our worship. He can command us to praise. He says, even if you people do not praise me, I can raise up stones. I can command stones to do that. Are you with me? But when it comes to worship, he told the woman of Samaria, he said, for such the father seek it. For such the father seek it. So worship is a free will sacrifice unto God. Hallelujah. As, as a professor, why should I lie down and say I'm worshiping God? In fact, most of our people, some, I always say some after saying most. Some of our people have climbed in education. They've climbed the educational ladder. And they have returned to us different people. Believe in God and he goes to do medicine. He comes back. He says, do you, you, ah, do you understand what is cancer? And you say cancer is leaving the building. critical spirit and they when when it is time to worship you see when you look at the heavenly scene in revelation chapter 4 everybody is involved everybody is involved but when you we you, we come to our congregations sometimes even our ushers they are not involved in the worship because they are looking for who is coming to fall to catch I pray that one day we'll be in a worship service and nobody has the feet to stand on to, work, to usher. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord and even the priest could not stand to minister. Hallelujah. Amen. I need to be and going to the next session quickly. Um, we just finished vertical, right? 
Oh, God to man. Oh, God to man. Yes. You remember in Exodus chapter 33, verse 14 to 16, Moses asked God a very important question. Uh, he says that if we don't see you going with us, we'll not go. Because there are advantages in God going with you. And I want to assure this church that God is traveling with you to the next place. Hallelujah. Moses knew that if the God factor is withdrawn from them, then the whole journey was useless. Because you spoke to me, you took me to Pharaoh's palace, you asked me what is in your hand, and then you, you asked us to walk on dry land in the midst of the seas. Anytime we have called upon you, you have brought solutions and made provisions. So now, if you don't go with us, what are we going to do? Because you know the people I am leading are stubborn. Stiff-necked people. They can ask for anything at any time. In fact, the Israelites could even have asked for pizza in the midst of the Red Sea. He said, if you don't, Moses, if you don't give us pizza to eat, we won't cross. And then, he says, God, you can't, you can't say you won't go. It has this one there. It won't work. If you do not go with us, we will not also go. How many of us can say that today? But God, if you don't go with us, we won't go. Say, God, if you don't go with us, we will not go. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 16, King Saul was sick. And they needed somebody to, suggestions were made to him that he could get a minstrel to play the harp skillfully. Look at what they said, somebody who plays skillfully. So in the mind of the servant, anybody who was skillful in playing the instrument could bring relief to Saul. Now somebody says, I've seen the son of Jesse. Okay, that's another sermon for another time. He said, I've seen it. He didn't say, I've heard of. He said, I have seen. Say, I have seen. Say, I have seen. Good. So, the first person said skill. Let's bring a musician. But somebody described David. He said, I've seen him. And the last thing they said about him was that they said he plays skillfully, but they said God is with him. Are you with me? He said God is with him. So, the difference between our meeting here and another meeting in a certain room somewhere. I don't know what they are doing. The difference between what is happening here this morning and what is happening somewhere else without God are the difference is that God is with us. If God wasn't here, it would have been another musical session or church service or a society or a cult or anything. But the distinction is that God is what? With us. Are you with me? Yeah. That's why there are some phrases in certain songs. When I'm singing and they come up, immediately I break down. It's either there is a release of a great anointing upon your life. You testify to it. Sometimes a phrase can knock you out. So you are here, dwelling within. Anytime I sing this portion of the song, I become weak. My nerves, everything, I become so weak because there is a release of a greater power upon me. It comes, it, it's like a confirmation of what your inner man already knows that he is here with you. Are you with me? And anybody who walked with God and was walking with like a macho man, strong, whatever, you were not walking with God. Because if you walk with God, huh, 
He will make you weak to make you strong. You see Daniel, some of them saw only angels and they broke down. Angels who, who have stood in the presence of God. My sister, do you know that you can enter a place and because of the glory of God upon your life, people who are possessed with demons will not be able to look at you because you stand, say I stand always in the presence of God. So when Gabriel came to, to Mary with the good tidings, to Mary kept saying, my Lord, my Lord. Why? Because you are an, an ambassador of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Am I speaking well? Okay, so I, I, I won't be able to talk about the rest though because of time. But I will come again. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, oh my God. So I said we have the vertical, which is man to God and God to man. Praise is a one-way street, remember. Worship is a two-way street. Praise is a one-way street. You don't praise God and then get anything back. When the blessings, when the praises go up, what, what do we say? Uh -huh. It's not in the Bible. But, it's, I mean, that phrase itself is not in the Bible. But we have seen God inhabiting the praises of his people. So once his presence is in the midst of the people, definitely something happens to his people. So it's a very wise song. Are you with me? But if I ask you to look for the quotation for me, when the praises go up, you won't find it. But by people's experiences with God, God had shown up because the Bible says he dwells in the praises of his people. Are you with me? Uh -huh. So, um, uh, praise. Brother, you are, you are so handsome. Hmm? In fact, I like your, your body. Uh, I see that you're, you are well built. Huh? Uh, I like the your afro and your all the hair on your head. Uh, in fact, your smile is so contagious, infectious. Eh? You play so well. Uh, um, I would like to be your friend. Okay, that is number one. Number two, I've said all that I said. I didn't say I would like to be your friend. That is a proper praise. That is the proper praise. Sister, you are beautiful. Whilst you are saying that and you have an ulterior motive, it is not genuine. But unfortunately, women love to hear. And men love to say. Are you with me? Yes. So, when we praise God, when it means to applaud, it means to, to express admiration of. Uh, praise doesn't mean to admire. No. Uh, beyond the admiration, there has to be a confession. Are you with me? So, if you admire somebody and you haven't spoken, it's not praise yet. If you have testimonies and you haven't shared, it is not a testimony yet. It means to express admiration. What is in your heart, speak it, speak, speak it out. Are you with me? So when we come to church and some people are talking to God, you are beautiful beyond description to marvelous for works. You are wonderful for comprehension like nothing ever seen or heard. You see, who can judge your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depths of your love? You are beautiful beyond description. Majesty enthroned above. I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God to whom 
all praise is due, I stand in awe of you. So there is, there is a program coming to Ghana, and they are saying, who should we call to direct the music? Who should, who should we call to handle this? Who should? And then you, you lift up your hand and you said, call Pastor Niokai. He would, he would do that for you. Call Pastor Nyoka and he will show you who can help you do that. That is praise. Are you with me? Do you understand what I'm saying? You are expressing admiration or approval of. If you have seen a lady in the church and you are interested in the person and it is in your head, please, you better go and talk. Because a smooth talker will enter the church Born again fresh, he knows how to talk. You come and talk and take it away from you. The day you hear the wedding announcement, you either faint or something else will happen to you. Say, ow. Is that wisdom? Okay. Okay, so, but you have written the, everything I said down. Because I'll have to end here for us to enter into worship. I know I'm, I'm, I don't even know how much of the time I've spent, but I know I've spent power. So the horizontal is this way. Which way? This is horizontal. Horizontal. Horizontal is this way. Okay. Vertical is this way. It flows up, it comes down. Horizontal. There are benefits we get in the congregation as we worship. A lot of benefits. A lot of them. When you read Colossians 3, 16, you know the scripture. Admonishing each other in some spiritual songs. You know, there's so, a lot of benefits. Somebody who is timid uh, coming to church will start coming to church and few weeks, few months, you see that the person's confidence is up because he goes into that church, he sees the doctors, the lawyers, the carpenters, the all manner of people are there. Somebody with a low self-esteem will enter a place and then suddenly he has more confidence than anybody else in the family. Are you with me? He is taught to talk directly to God, not through any man. You have bold access. Therefore, let us enter boldly into his presence. Are you with me? It, it, it's a lot of benefit. I get to know Pastor Dawson. He gets to know me. Hello, I guess to know I uh, get to know Pastor Pastor Nee. He gets to know me. You see that people people are with us in from other countries. We have never met physically before, but we are having the same interaction, singing the same songs with both the the high and the low. No, your your rhythm is not different. There's a, church, a certain church in Takradi. They shocked me one day. There were two uh, uh, parliamentary asp aspirants in the same church. And when one is entering, they play a different song. Church or church service. Oh, you know, Rebo. Oh, you know. And, and, and the man who come late, he will intentionally come late. Around election time, they play. When the, oh, you know, Rebo. Then the other, when the other one also enters, the song is different. The rhythm is different. In congregational worship, we dance to the same rhythm, uh, sing to the same rhythm. Are you with me? Sing to the same instrumentations. The same lyrics is available to all of us. Fair, dark, black, white, green, gray. Nobody is different. We are all the same. That's one of the benefits. I can't say all of them because of time. Are you with me? So the vertical, the horizontal, the, the third one is uh, the inward aspect or the inward benefit we get. You know, the scripture says at a point, making melody where? In your heart. Anytime, anytime I sit quietly and begin to hum songs, 
it means that there is going to be an explosion. Do you know how much power is in the dumb person? The person who is dumb but cannot speak. Do you know how much power those people carry? Do you know the reason why sometimes they are, they are, they are violent? Because there is something inside them they can't express. So in their, in their actions, sometimes they are very violent. If you see a quiet man, eh, don't underestimate him. The day he explodes, when a quiet person explodes, you run away. Are you with me? Making melody. You don't, do you, singers, do you understand making melody in your heart? Eh? Can you just imagine somebody sitting in a corner humming this song for one hour or two hours? The next thing that comes out of his mouth is, Thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. And our offering, our worship is not just singing. In fact, singing is not worshipful. The worship is not singing. Singing is a medium we employ to express ourselves to God because it is very common with us and we love it. It's, it's, I think it's the most loved. If I speak for 40 minutes here and you sleep, eh, let me say the same things I want to say in a song and see what, if you will sleep. Are you with me? Yeah. And if you are a music person, and the thing is inborn. There are times when you are singing and the words are staring at you. As, uh, by divine means, it's like the words, they jump and enter you. And when you start expressing yourself, then the, those with a critical spirit, ah, and you say, do, 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 na, na, yeah. <laughs> uh, are you with me are we blessed this morning are we blessed congregational worship is a powerful thing the bible says two are better than one okay yeah it's quite different from our individual worship because when you are worshipping alone, there are things you can do. You do it the way you want. You can start from the leg and end up on the head. So that's your way of... But the reason why we have a worship leader or a song leader or somebody leading a song is so that the person will bring focus to the worship. Okay, if I say we should go into worship right now, Everybody sing your song. There will be chaos here. I hope you get me. But if somebody, my sheep hear my voice. Uh, my sheep hear my voice. I know them. And they what? They follow me. There has to be a shepherd who leads us into the presence of God. And that song leader, worship leader, those of you who are fighting over leading worship in your churches. Is he the only person who, who can lead worship? Every time is, is this person. Oh, don't worry. We'll give you a microphone. In fact, the worship leader, I said it on one of my wisdom sessions. It's two words. Two words. Worship and what? Leader. Most of our worship leaders are not leaders. They are worshippers, but they are not leaders. That's why we need to train everybody who is in this department to be a leader, to know the word, to know God. 
So that in a service like this, I know some churches don't allow it, but in a service like this, he can say, please, can you come down a little? There is a prophecy in the atmosphere. If it is in your mouth, speak it. How did he know? The person has been trained to know God. Are you with me? Very important. That is why the worship leader is a priest himself. It's not because you have nice voice, sister. You are a priest. If some people could play the trumpet, 120 men in the same garment, unity, right? In unison, could play the trumpet. And the power of God filled the house of the Lord. And the priest could not minister. Then you have to know that where we stand is so important to God. And where you stand as a worshiper in your house, don't just remain there. Graduate in the things of God. Improve. When you improve in the things of God, eh, you no longer sing songs. You will minister songs unto God. And God will minister unto his people back. Hallelujah. Can we just lift up our two hands? Please let me know how many minutes I have so that if it is finished too, then I can borrow a little. Hallelujah. Just, just lift up two hands. Thank you, Jesus. Obiara Tesewo Ampara Obiara in Tesewo Nyanku Pon Shri Diampon and Yum Yami one son on Juma, ye Lara, ye Waye. Where Wuma bought, see her die. Won't you, Ampara Obiara in Tesewo Miwaye Miwaye Yami Miwaye Obiara in Tesewo Won yim yemu, a tomu, a wofemu yi, a Oh, 
glorious God, oh, glorious God, we pray, we lay, we, lay, we, lay, we, we worship, we worship, see your glorious God. Say, I worship you, glorious God. I worship you. I lay my life. I worship you. Oh, glorious, glorious Lord. Father, we honor you. Father, we bless you. Jehovah, we praise and adore you this morning. We come to you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you this morning. Salvation. 
we lift our hearts and voices with blessed and tested patience and cry love and get to God sing almighty almighty victory thy greatness we praise most blessed most blessed most glorious the ancient of days Most blessed, most blessed, most glorious, you're the ancient of days, almighty, victorious. Secondly, it was planted. Thirdly, it dies. And no man lays it to heart. That the seed is buried, will die for a period. Then shall rise up again in great strength. And shall become a fruit that contains seeds, and out of which many, many, many trees 
to be born. In the beginning, it is not nice. But in the end, it will be beautiful. For I make all things beautiful in my own time. But if I have said it, I will do it. The one who made the ears, the ears, can he not hear? The one who formed the eyes, can he not see? The builder of a house is more honorable than the house itself. For I will build my church. The gate of hell shall not prevail against it. For I have already won the battle on your behalf. Only be thou bold and courageous. For I will be with you, saith the Lord. Woo me ye me me so me ye oba Shevo when ye moon ya, I sit nigh mo. Woo ye me me <laughs> Let me give you this few 30 seconds to be quiet in the presence of God. My prayer for you, church, is that the giftings of the Holy Spirit will multiply in your midst. That what is hidden in any one of us will be activated from this morning. That our children would sleep and wake up with directions from God. Even the little ones will prophesy. I put power in your tongue to when, when you speak. The forest will hear and give way to you. Many shall say, here comes the king. He is victorious in battle, wonderful in praise. We shall be called the blessed of the Lord. I say, me cultural. Please let's take our seat. And no, Tina, Mamba, how much it quite can bring me to a meal. Mira, Mamba, I say, me ami kachira wo inu inti na maba ao majikwa k 
Come breathe with your beautiful Hallelujah. Amen. Open your eyes with me. Please open your eyes with me. We thank God for this morning. I am blessed. I believe you are blessed too. Hallelujah. The next time I come, I know you, you had wanted us to sing on and on and on. The next time I come, we'll sing more songs. The understanding of the word of God we've had this morning is so important for our next worship. You understand what I mean? It's so key. And often we want to get into the act without having any knowledge about it. I believe this morning God has spoken. Before I sit down, uh, Pastor Nee, uh, please you can come. Please come. I'm just taking my seat. But just spare me one minute, sir. Uh, before you, you take over, I want to pray with you as a brother and the pastor can join us, Pastor Dawson. And we pray that God will strengthen you. And then the Lord will honor you. What you are seeing is just the beginning. At any point in time when it seems like the colors are fading in your eyes. Remember that it takes the glory of God to make it shine. For you will not fail. Say the Lord. Because I call people and honor them. I have never disgraced anyone I have used. If it is a thousand cattle you want, I have them in abundance. If it is mountains you want to move, I have endued you with power to move mountains. If it is people you want to please, I have given you power, ability to please them. But because you have asked for wisdom, I give you wisdom and I give you all the other things in addition. From today onwards, command, lead in Jesus' name. Please, when you have to give offerings and bless the man of God, please, let's do it very, very well. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we thank God for such a wonderful time. I hope you are all blessed. Yes. There's coldness in this room. Solemnness. We thank God. See, the word has shocked everybody. The feeling is different in this room. I don't know about you. And I hope the feeling is different also wherever you are. We thank God so much. Today I want to do something special. But before then, um, we want to give our offering unto the Lord. You've heard the word. The word has come upon you. God has blessed you so much. You also want to bless God with our substance. And from there we move on to the second part. Amen. So take something wonderful. I sing this. Can you give us a song as we... Thank you, Lord Jesus.
God has blessed us with Pastor Lee. We thank you so much. I think you served your generation so much. And God is still using you. And it's our prayer that God will continue to use you to serve your generation and the generation to come. Amen. The <laughs> But the young full fresh and mad, a man in now one world. Oh, rubbish, our was in be, may in be a man in no, no question, you dare, may in no, it's past the match, you remain. But the young full fresh and mad, no, what comes, master, match, you remain. But the young full fresh and mad, no, Nasa, oh, man, in Sadwa. cried in a long while. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, 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 bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. Wow, we have CDs. Wow. Then can tell me singing right there. So before I tell you about these CDs, I want to say a very, very big thank you. The, 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 great, the greatest joy of a pastor is to have people believe in his calling. The day a pastor walks in and there's nobody. It's not lands or houses or cars or whatever. But that you showed up. And I can tell you why. Even Jesus, he asked the disciples, will you also go? Will you also go? But like they told him, I, I see faces that give me joy. And, and, and that, 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 that gives me so much joy. And the fact that you can go beyond that to, from your needs, from your pains, from your struggles, to, to decide to be a blessing to me on this day. I say thank you. I thank you on behalf of my family, my wife. They say they said when you this is just a joke. They said when you have 1900 in the house and uh, a thousand belongs to your wife, you actually have 900. So for your wife to actually sow into your life Yeah, the Lord will promote you again. Yeah. And the Lord will promote each and every one of you. He will establish what concerns you. In this very week, I was in Christ Oasis Ministries. In fact, the Lord sent me there. And as I ministered to them on, Kala, was it Thursday or Friday? was Thursday. I, I, I just poured out my, my heart to them and I didn't know there were prophets in the house. Like, the house full of prophets. <laughs> it is, I mean, the Lord spoke to my need. 
the Lord spoke to me, and they declared so many things. And the Lord confirmed it yesterday and this morning. So whatever is happening here is spiritual. Sometimes the Lord does it. He makes sure that he drains you to the point where you would appreciate what he's coming to do for you. And I stand as a, as a broken man. I'm, I'm, I'm joyful and all, but my wife knows. And so what the Lord has started, I know it's not for me because I'm a channel. There's something that Reverend Joe said that made me wake up throughout the whole service. He said, when the Lord sees you, he sees you as a sheep. And when he sees you as a sheep, it means that you will not grow hungry. It, it, that, that was my message for today. I am his sheep. And if I don't grow hungry, none of you will grow hungry. None of you will grow hungry. I'm, I'm speaking prophetically. None of you will beg for food. You will actually lend to many and not borrow. And I held that, 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 that desire that the Lord has placed in you to institute this thing against my will. <laughs> I, know, I know it's from above. And so the Lord hasn't started with you yet. I know. We, we go way back. But what I feel within my spirit is that an elevation is coming. I needed to step out of the way so the Lord does it. And the Lord is going to do it not just for you, but for the people in this house. Because the work is big. But just like he caused armies to come as if they were coming to invade the people of Israel and use the footsteps of four lepers to cause a distraction of these armies so that apparently they brought all their treasures and their wealth into the land of Israel. That was why he instigated them to come. The Lord is going to instigate people to look for you from their toil and from everything that they think they are preparing. And they will lay them at your feet because of the work of the Lord. So I thank you again from the depths of my heart. And the Lord will do it and glorify his name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So please, how, how many CDs did... Aha. Uh -huh. Please, let's, let, let's make sure everybody has the set. It's three, right? One, two, three. Uh, uh, please give everybody a set. Why? Obia, one set. These are songs that I lived on. And the Lord released something in, 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 in my spirit. And if I've stood the test of time to this point, I, I recommend these songs to you. Play them, especially the younger ones today. They don't know the real songs. They don't. Play these and you not pray for five minutes anymore. I'm telling you, put this thing in. You pray the whole night. You wake up and you, you feel like praying. And once you are in that sacred place, you move mountains. So give everybody, you know. Hallelujah. Give everybody. And we are not taking, he's not taking any with him. Uh, let's, let's give everybody. If you don't sow enough, I will pay for you and take your blessing. So share. Oh, I'm serious. Mobia three. Mibisaka la sahin odibaya. And so I'm mesoso. 
so that whatever blessing is coming, I'll get my share out of it. Yes. Make sure everybody picks three. And then send the money to Carla. You, you know how, how much CDs go for, but I don't want to sell it. Give Carla the money. When she gives me the breakdown, before she sends it to Jobicham Ministries, me, I'll top up. If I need to. What you have a brain, so I'm not made the account. <laughs> Hallelujah. Today is an oily day. Uh, bring bring them so that he can release that grace upon us. Wow. Such a blessing. Shall we be upstanding? Um, I don't, I didn't know I would meet Pastor Joe. <laughs> and I, I didn't tell Pastor Joe that I'll be I'll be coming here. Uh, in fact, we we've been in Takradi for a while and we hardly meet. <laughs> we we both left Takradi and we have come with a lot of oil. I tell you. And and the Bible says that he anoints my head with oil. And the next verse is my cup runs over. Mm. I see an overflow coming for Amen. you. Amen. Proverbs 25, 25, the Bible says that as cold waters is to a thirsty soul, mm. so is good news from a far country. Mm. In this week, you will hear good news. Amen. From far and from near in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. When the enemy comes against you like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard against the enemy and your soul will escape as the bird escapes out of the snare of a fowler. Mm. The snare is broken and you have escaped. Your help, help is in the name, name of the Lord. Lord. For God is our refuge and our fortress. Mm. A very present help in time of trouble. Mm. May the Lord be your present help in Amen. the name of Jesus. May every sickness, every disease, every infirmity melt at the power of the name of jesus yes lord may the lord make you whole mm. from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet mm. may your spirit be healed may your soul be healed mm. may your body be healed mm. in the name of jesus yes may the lord bless and keep you mm. may the lord cause his face to shine upon you mm. and may the lord give you peace mm. May the Lord lift up his countenance over your life. Mm. And may the peace of God that transcends all understanding, the shalom of God, peace mm. in your mind, peace in your soul, peace in your body, peace mm. in your spirit. Mm. May that be your portion this week. And may the Lord go before you. And may the Lord go behind you. May the Lord go beside you. May the Lord be all around you. And most importantly, may the Lord be within you in this week. In Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. So unmute your microphones. Let's share the words of the grace together. Everybody, may the grace of Jesus the grace Christ, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the love of God, love of God and the sweet fellowship, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, of the Holy be Spirit, with us forevermore. forevermore. Amen. God bless you.